Now we'll come to another very important aspect of creating light maps is resolution. Each light map on every single one of these objects has a predetermined resolution for those light maps. In order to see the light map resolution, we need to open up the content browser and let's open up our wall. Here we have light map resolution set to 64. This is 64 by 64 pixels that defines where the shadows and the lights will happen. We can change this resolution to bring it higher to 128, 256, 512 and increase the shadow and the light edges how crisp and how quality they are. Or we can bring it down to 32, 16. Uh, these values are best when you use them in powers of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 and so on. Now light map resolutions are best when you keep them down to a, a lower end scale. So I would recommend not to go up higher than 512. Uh, you can go up to 256, 512, 1024 for very large objects. You want to keep the light map texture memory size down as low as possible while keeping the visual quality at its best. So you don't want to increase the quality of your resolution high on every single thing. This will increase the texture memory of your light map and it will increase the build time of your map. If you want to do it per object, if you double click, you can override your light map res by checking this on and inputting the value of what resolution you want. So if the object is very far and the player will never get to it up close, you may want to override that light map res and turn it way down. But for objects that come close to the player, you may want to leave it at default to whatever you have it set, or you may increase it even higher. So this will be very helpful to optimize your meshes depending on the distance that the player will get to that static mesh, and the quality of light and shadows that you want for that object. So here I have our test object, the wall, and I overrided light map resolution, and I've set it at 16, and then it goes to 32, 64, 128. So if we take a look at 16 light map res, we can see that there's just not enough texture space to calculate and show us the lighting and shadow information for this object. If we go to 32, it's a little bit better. We can see more defined shadows, but there's still some problems with how those shadows appear. For 64, it looks a lot better and this could almost pass for the final look of the mesh and 128 looks the best another thing is a lot of these little errors like for example in the 64 uh, will be not noticeable when we apply a diffuse a specular and a normal map to the mesh so we're looking at this in a fong flat shader so all these errors are very noticeable but if we're going and remove and see it with the texture with the final material on this mesh begins to look a lot better another important part of resolution to consider is what type of light map resolution you have per object that are right next to each other and that has shadow being casted on them so here I have the planes and I went ahead and I changed the resolution per every single mesh and we can see that different resolution produces different shadows and these shadows of the objects do not match. So if we double click we can see I set this light map res to 8 and the one right next to it is set at 32. So this distorts the shadows and how they're being casted. So the important part to consider is to make sure you match the light map resolution across objects where your shadows are being casted on. This will keep the shadow and light consistency across the objects the same. So if I go ahead and make sure that everything is back to default and build lighting. After building lighting there's still a few little artifacts that we would need to fix but you get the idea of making sure that the resolution of each mesh matches. Now there is a very helpful viewport view that you can use to let you know how much texel density across each and every single light map you have in your map. 
you go up above, you have light map density, and you have lighting only with texel density. So let's take a look at this one first. So if we take a look, we have all of these meshes match in texel density across each other. If we go over to another object, let's go over to our 16-bit pixel. So here we can see that the floor is set at, at a very high light map resolution and our object is showing very low texel density. So that is why we see an inconsistency of shadows from one object to another that do not match. Here at 64, this is a little bit better. Going from one object to another, this matches. And if we go 128, this looks a lot better too. Now I'm going to go ahead and change back a few of these and take a look at what that texel density looks like across all of those planes. Here we can see the light map texel density does not match across objects and it destroys the consistency of the shadow, the casted shadow across objects. Another thing you can take a look at which is very helpful is light map density. Here you can set your ideal density, your maximum density and take a look at it using the color view. Uh, you can render it grayscale. I don't use this a lot. I tend to use lighting only with texel density to see my uh, light map texel density. And last but not least is setting your light map resolution for your BSP. Here I have a BSP brush and a static mesh that's casting shadows on this geometry of BSP. We can see that the difference in texel density of your light maps between the floor and the BSP geometry. And these do not match. So we want to make sure that these match and cast consistent shadow across two objects. The floor is set to a very high light map res, 1024. That is because this is a large surface area. And in order to get very crisp shadows, you need a very high light map res. And the BSP, if we double click, we have a way to set light map res for BSP only. Right now it's set at 32. And the key to BSP light map resolution is the lower you go, the higher the quality of shadows will be. So if you bump this up to 64, this will actually make the lighting and the shadow of your light map worse. So this is the opposite of what you would set for your static meshes. So we need to bring this down to about 8. Let's try this and let's build lighting. And it's already looking a lot better we can do a little bit more consistent. Uh, we can bump it down to I would say maybe four. Uh, two I think will be too much. So four I think will make it look really good consistent across the ground and the BSP geometry. And here we are. Looks a lot better. We have nice crisp light and shadow of the tree. So I hope this tutorial was very helpful to understand the light map resolution of static meshes of BSP and getting more consistent shadows and light across multiple objects in your scene.